type with any entertainment person in the entertainment industry mm -hmm. where you kind of can just roll with the punches, mm -hmm. you know. So a lot of entertainers are okay being on like the Conan O'Brien show and he'll ask some random question and you can just like talk about it, you know. Um, so I think that a lot of people in the entertainment industry can deal with that a lot better than people who are in different industries and still have to deal with some other things. So like I've seen businessmen deal with the same flight delay that I've dealt with and they freak out, you know, whereas right. our group is just like, I guess we're not going to have a sound check tonight. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> so it's not sound check. Right. Um, so it's, it, I, I think it's a performer thing more than a jazz musician thing, but cool. Yeah, it could, I, it could have something to do with that. Good to know. Gajizi is throwing out big wisdom here for you here on singingtelevision.com. I'm very excited about it. Um, I've got more questions for you. What are the things that you think every singer should know how to do? Now, keep in mind, this is an educational video, and so, you know, I, I, I think that you know what I want you to start with. Start with you, with what you think is important. Cool. Um, well, I think that uh, there's a balance in singing. Mm -hmm. So I think that all singers really should Two things. This is my one and two. Uh -huh. um, number one is be familiar with your instrument. So know some technique. You know how to breathe, how to warm up your instrument, um, and just know you know some of the anatomy so that you have a grasp on your instrument. Because I think that uh, a lot of people can sing naturally, mm -hmm. and so that kind of leads them to feel like they don't have to do that homework. Great. So when you say technique and stuff, what about Reading music. How important is that to you? When you're learning a song... That's a different part of my answer. Okay, so let's talk about that. Okay, okay, okay. Go ahead. Um, so, you know, I think that there, there is a right brain and a left brain part of singing. Uh -huh. And so I think that it also is really important to do some of the other homework in terms of like how to interpret a song, how to be present in the message of the lyric, and all that stuff. But I do think that there needs to be a responsibility for your instrument as well. Because I think that a lot of the reasons why singers get a bad rap from instrumentalists is that we don't have to practice. A lot of singers just have this innate ability, mm -hmm. but I think that it's our job to be responsible for our instrument and be responsible as musicians as well. Absolutely. And that leads me into the point that you wanted to bring up, which is, you know, knowing some theory. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that leads me into my third answer, which is um, playing an instrument. I think it's okay. really important, and not necessarily being amazing at your instrument, but, but being able to play piano and read sheet music, or being able to play guitar and read sheet music, mm -hmm. you know? Just like having bearings to have the dialogue with the musicians that you're trying to lead to say, okay, the fourth bar, this is what I'm looking for. Okay. And it doesn't have to be, you know, I want everyone to T in the 16th measure, you know, it doesn't have to be like the crazy theoretical language, but for you to be able to say, hey, can you guys be quieter at the bridge, or something like that, you know, I feel like it's... Or something sounds funny, I think it's because you're playing a dominant chord and I want a major seven chord. Sure, and that's like, you know, an, an advanced Absolutely. level of, of what we're talking about, but just being able to say, my key is in E flat, you know. Big, it would be great if deal. people could say, I'm hearing a different chord here, mm -hmm. but I think the basis really should be, yeah, some, some language, even beginning stages of the language, being able to communicate with your group. Very nice. Love it. Kajizi wisdom. I call her Sarah Kajizi. I'm trying to spread the love. Sarah's going to, I'm sure, forward this to every million Twitter fan and Facebook fan she has, and now everybody's going to call her Kajizi. Spread it. Spread it. How do you feel about that? Is that okay? Sure. Um, what are three things that you do every day pertaining to singing? Now, I don't know if you have three things that you do every day, because I think I do different things every day. I would say, I think maybe I have three things that I do, definitely do every week, mm -hmm. but I may do three different things pertaining to singing every day. So, I'm curious what you do. Well, I, if I'm having a good day for singing, like every once in a while, you know, a couple days a week I won't do one of the things in my formula. Sure. But I always really try every day to do some kind of breathing exercise. Just to work the muscles here, keep mm -hmm. everything kind of intact. You want to show us one of those breathing sure. exercises? Sure. Yeah. I love that. Okay. Um, but I feel like it's, it's like any muscle. You know, if you don't jog five times a week, your heart won't be as strong as if you did. Right. Sure. Um, you can't train for a marathon by running. I say this actually sometimes to my students. You can't train for a marathon by going and running 23 or 22, whatever miles it is, mm -hmm. you have to first run a mile, then a couple miles, then right. five miles, then 10, and eventually
eventually you'll be ready for right. that. And Lance Armstrong can't take three years off and then do the Tour de France. He has to train in between all of them. So Great. keeping it up, even as somebody who does sing often, I feel like it's crucial. Mm -hmm. um, so my favorite breathing exercise, if I only have um, time for like one, mm -hmm. uh, taking, yeah, taking, you still standing up in the camera? We good? Okay. So taking a really deep breath mm -hmm. um, and uh, breathing out all of my air on one F with six punctuations. Mm -hmm. Now the punctuations aren't necessarily even. The only thing that's even is that I'm pushing just as hard each time. So if I'm running out of breath at the fourth one, that's okay. okay. I still push just as hard. So it okay. takes like, okay, I'll just do it. Interesting. Totally out of breath. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So let's try that. Let's yeah. try it together. So if you are there at the end of it, you want to keep squeezing. Okay. So if the sixth one is totally long, that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, but you don't want to breathe in between them, you don't want to close your throat to make it sound like you're doing six. Right. It doesn't accomplish anything. It's six individual punctuations from down. Great. Now, this is episode number six. In episode number five, we went over what it takes to take a proper singing breath. And in order to do that so that everybody can see you, you turn sideways. And it was the most flattering thing for us ladies to turn sideways. Mm -hmm. I'm kidding. But let's do that exercise again. Okay. And then you want to get all, all of the air out by like the fourth, so that by the fifth and sixth you're like squeezing air that isn't in there. Okay. Yeah. Great. Cool. So that's my favorite one to do. Uh -huh. um, and then after I've done some, some breathing exercises, I do enjoy warming up. Mm -hmm. um, I have a number of different warm-ups that I like to do, um, ranging from super simple lip buzz exercises mm -hmm. to singing. Um, you know, super intervallic, like, like jumping octave mm -hmm. type stuff. Show us one. Um, and in fact, we've got some copy and paste um, warm-ups on the site that you'll see. They should be up there under warm-ups. Um, and maybe Gajizi will leave me when we're off camera and show me some of her favorite warm-ups. I can put them up there, credit her name, all that kind of stuff. So one that I like to do that bridges the gap between the chest voice and the head voice mm -hmm. is slide and then you come back down. So. Um, this one is one that I like to do if I don't have any other time to warm up during the day. Um, so it's I open the door, so we're sliding on the eye. So it's I open the door. I know that one. That's it. Let's do it together. I open the door. I open the door. There's Sarah's exercise. A lot of people do that. I like it. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah. So that's a good one, and then there are a lot of other ones that I enjoy doing, but that's a great one if you're chest voice, head voice, plagued. Um, and then the third thing that I always, always, always encourage is a lot of listening. Okay. Great. So, um, different styles of music as well, but it just keeps the creative juices and inspiration flowing. Nice. So, Sarah, I mean, people, when people think of us, they think jazz singers, right? People who know us in the circles that... Uh, do. Mm -hmm. um, but I know that both you and I have eclectic music tastes mm -hmm. because we always talk about it and make each other's CD mixtapes that we never actually give each other, but we're on the phone going like, oh my god, have you checked this person out? Yes, have you checked this person out? Blah, blah, blah. So name some of your favorite musicians. How about jazz first and then not jazz? Okay. Um, well, my all-time favorite jazz singer and everyone says this, and so I always feel a little silly saying it, but it's true. It's Ella, I know. you know. I and it's she's like the all-encompassing storyteller, improviser, beautiful voice, nice person. You know, it's just you know, if it freaks enough.